Hey there, welcome to LFF. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, here's a playlist of all of our LFF episodes. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually tying into something we just did this past Sunday. In case you missed it, we conducted Large Format Live, which was a live studio shoot from my buddy Tariq Terry's studio, a little bit north of here. Now we're at 400 West Rich here in downtown Columbus, Ohio. So what we're gonna do today, my buddy Tariq was kind enough to develop uh, the six sheets of HP5 that we exposed on Sunday in his Jobo setup. And I'm gonna take these negatives into the darkroom and contact print all six of them onto one sheet of 11 by 14 paper. Now, I don't do this that often with four by five. I'm used to doing eight by 10 sheets on eight by 10 sheets of paper, but I wanted to do something special as a thank you to Tariq and China and Maddie and everybody else who made uh, Sunday's shoot happen. It was a lot of work. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we all enjoyed putting it on for you. And let's make a contact sheet. If you just started shooting large format and you're looking for a way to proof your work or preview it uh, without having to do a full-on enlargement, contact printing is a great way to work. Sure, you can take a picture of this with your smartphone on a light box or maybe a DSLR or mirrorless, but this is a nice way to get a physical print out of it. All you need is your film, a light sensitive material, in this case some Ilford multi-grade fiber, and something to kind of hold the two in contact with each other. I have a specific contact printing frame, but if you don't have one of these fancy things with the springs and felt, you can also just use a really nice clean thick piece of glass to hold that negative sandwiched emulsion side to the emulsion side of the paper. So dull side of the negative to the shiny side of the paper, and that's gonna provide your contact. You don't even need an enlarger to do this. Really, I'm just using this Bessler 23C to cast a circle of light that I can control with a timer and an f-stop. If you just have like a really dim five or 10 watt bulb with like the little shop light reflector, that would work great as well. Before I turn the lights out and it gets a little bit harder to see in here, I wanted to show you the, how one of these contact print frames works. So on the back here, we just have these little tensioning springs and those are just gonna hold everything in place. Uh, this is also great for printing out processes where maybe halfway through an ultraviolet exposure, you need to check and see how everything is so you can maintain pressure on some part of the negative while checking the print. But then once those are all unlocked, I can pull this up and then there's my piece of glass right there and I would just place my negatives shiny side out toward the glass or an even easier way to work, I can lay everything on top of my felt uh, and then just drop the glass on top of it. Uh, that's how I usually prefer to do it. So before I make my final exposure, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my negatives. I just have them on this white paper, so you can kinda, this white mat board, so you can kinda see. So I'll lay them like that, and then I'll drop my contact printing frame and glass right on top of it. But before we really get going, I'm also gonna need to clean this glass because it's gotten a little bit dusty. So we have our little test strip exposure, and let's put two minutes on the clock. Watch it go. Should see something coming up here in a second. Yeah, there's China right there. There she is. So again, a contact print is just the negative in contact with the piece of paper. So you're not getting any enlargement out of it, but you're getting your maximum sharpness out of it. And this was, let's see, I think the enlarger, yeah, the enlarger is almost three feet up because it's a 23C. It's got a tiny little condenser head. So bringing it up so I can have coverage over my 11 by 14. It's important to make your test exposure at the same height in same settings that you're going to do your final exposure at. If I have to change the height or anything, then I have to do a whole another test strip because our variables when we're printing are our f-stop, our time, our distance, and our developing time and temperature. And you want to try and control as many of those as possible. Just treat it like science. Flip it one more time. I like to get hands-on with fiber paper. It feels really nice in my hands. Uh, and I've messed up stuff with tongs before too. So we're a little over a minute right now. And even though it looks like it's finished developing, I wanna make sure I'm getting the maximum black that I can out of this print. So even though it looks like it's done, you always go the same time. If I pull it now too soon, I will notice when the lights are on that 
one print is maybe a little bit foggier than another. It doesn't, or muddier, it doesn't have that same deep black. Turn the light on, Let's see what we're working with here. Oh yeah, it's looking pretty good. So I've got good highlight retention and I've got a good amount of shadow detail in there too. And I can just barely distinguish the border of the print with the black area of the paper. And that's, uh, that's a pretty good indicator that my exposure is right where I want it to be. All right, so we just made our first exposure on the full 11 by 14 contact print. Let's drop that into the developer. I always drop it in face down so it just makes even contact so I don't get any weird streaks. And then all I'm doing is I'm pushing down the corners here just to make sure we get good coverage of our developer. And I'll flip it one more time. Hey, hey, there's a contact sheet. Oh man, that's looking good. All right, it's gonna be a long two minutes. I'm just really excited about this, wow. Okay, we've been in the fixer for almost two minutes now. Plenty of time to make your light safe. Turn the light on and, oh yeah. Oh, these look so nice. Oh, those boots. So making me remember how, how jealous those boots made me. Oh man, look at that. Got some great portraits here. Very, very nice. We do have one blank there, not the end of the world. Overall, that is a really clean contact sheet. All right. Yeah, I wanna do more four by five contact sheets like this. This is sweet. Okay, so we've done a little bit of printing. Okay, quite a bit of printing. I wanted to make sure I had contact sheets for everybody. I just wanted to show you kind of the progress we've got so far. These were for some of my test strips. So I got really lucky today. I only needed to do one test strip. So I took one sheet and then I did four, eight, 12 seconds on there. I probably could have done like two, four, six. I was just ballparking it. And it was closer to four seconds, but it was at a lower F number. So what I did is I increased my F stop and increased my time. So instead of five, six at four seconds, I did um, F8 at eight seconds. So two stops down uh, at eight seconds on there. And I think a little bit of the way through, I might've gone to eight and a half seconds and just with the rest of my strips made little extra contact sheets. And then these are the full series here. So I did, I did six of them and that way I can give one to everybody that was involved. So one for me, one for Tariq, one for China, one for Maddie, and then one for Cheyenne who was working the switcher. So we're gonna have one for everybody today. And the last thing I need to do to make these a little bit more archivally permanent, as well as give them a little bit of extra color tone, I'm going to tone them in this next tray in some Kodak Rapid Selenium Toner. I'm gonna to do one, one to nine. So one part selenium toner to nine parts water. And that's gonna give me a little bit of that purplish shift, but not too much, but it's also gonna make these prints last longer as long as I continue washing them the right way. So I have my holding bath, I've got my selenium bath, and then another wash bath. You don't wanna put something that was just toned in with the rest of them. So just kind of proceed one at a time. All right. Okay, let's tone one of the big ones. This was my first contact sheet. So remember, untone, and this should start turning from that greenish to a little bit more neutral to a little bit more red over the course of the next 45 or so seconds. It's a subtle change, and I'm sorry if it doesn't come over the video, but selenium toning is I think it's just one extra way to add a little bit of pop to your prints. Oh yeah, there it's coming in. 
hopefully we're catching that difference on camera. Getting a little bit of that purpliness. Don't want to go too far with it. There we go. Alright, let's bring that into the final wash. Cool, and we'll go to our next one. Alright, the only thing left to do is squeegee off some prints and get them on the drying rack. So I'm just using windshield wiper. Perfectly good squeegee that about 10,000 times more people need than darkroom squeegees. So just get the excess water off of the back and then get it off of the front. Make sure your squeegee doesn't have any dings or anything in it because we don't want to nick the emulsion. We just want to get the excess water off of there. Oh yeah, it's going to dry off nicely. Well that wasn't so bad, was it? A little light, a little paper, and a little time, and we were able to take those negatives we made from large format live and turn them into a contact sheet. Pretty cool, huh? If you have any questions about making contact prints in the black and white darkroom, or you just wanna let me know what you thought about the whole process of large format live and, and how the sheet came out, let me know down below there too. If you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, there's gonna be a new upload with something different in the large format photographic processes. And if the excitement keeps up, we're probably gonna be seeing more episodes of large format live coming soon. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next time for more LFF.